My fellow arcade and modding enthusiasts, greetings and salutations to you all. I am technically not a technician, and in today's video, I'll show you how I decase the PCB in my Arcade 1UP Terminator 2 Arcade to help ensure that it runs at the lowest temperature with the best airflow we can get. This should help the PCB last longer and give us better performance. However, before we get started, I need to remind you that this video is for educational purposes only, and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. With the legal prerequisites out of the way, let's talk about the parts needed for today's mod. We'll start with the metal standoffs that we'll be using. For this mod, I picked M2.5 standoffs for the main PCB board. I'm also going to be rerouting some of the cabling from the monitor to the PCB, and I'll be using some rubber grommets to protect the cabling. I'll also be using a step bit and a standard bit to make an appropriate opening for my grommet and cable penetration. I will be posting affiliate links in the description. This action serves two purposes. The first is to save you time in picking the right part the first time for this project, and the second is to help support the channel. I do hope you find the links helpful, and I thank you for your support. With all of our needed tools and parts acquired, let's get this project started, and give this cab some much needed airflow. I'm not going to get into taking the cab apart and removing the monitor and PCB board. I may be way off, but I feel like most of us have built a few cabs, and to help save time, it makes sense to skip over the removal of the monitor and PCB board. Just remember to take your time, don't damage anything, and work smart. I've prepared a surface to work on by using a soft towel as a backing to protect the plexiglass bezel on our monitor. Please be sure not to apply too much pressure to the back of the monitor. Using too much force will damage the unit. Remember to work smart. There are six screws that secure the PCB case to the back of the monitor, and there are two other screws connected to a small power switch that is part of the PCB board. All eight of those screws will need to be removed, and you'll want to save them as we'll be reusing them. This mod isn't a new idea, as many other modders do this to help keep cabs and pinball units as cool as possible. If you're not familiar with the concept, the idea is to continue to use all the parts, but mount the PCB to the outside of the PCB case, and then mount the case back to the monitor. This action lets us increase the airflow to the PCB and removes the PCB from any heat that could come from the monitor. I've also seen other modders add fans to the back of the cab to really increase the airflow. That's not a bad idea at all. However, for today's mod, I'll just be moving the PCB. I've not had issues with my PCB, and I'm really only doing this as a preventive measure and because I think it looks cool. We'll also have to disconnect a few cables that come from the back of the monitor, and I'll even remove a ribbon cable that normally links the control deck and the PCB. If you're curious about the monitor cables, there are three, two that connect to the PCB board itself, and one that is for the earth ground connection. There is also one that runs from the Wi-Fi antenna to the PCB board that will also need to be removed. We've got four screws that secure the PCB board to the PCB board case. Those four screws will also need to be removed. However, when remounting the PCB, I'll be using the screws that came with my M2.5 standoffs, as I know that those screws have the same helix spacing as the threads on the standoffs. I also had to expand the case to get the PCB board free, as some of the external connections protruded from the case. I didn't have to expand the case much, and once the PCB was out, I simply bent the case back to its original condition. The next item on the agenda for our modification is making a path for the monitor cabling to exit the case and connect to the PCB. I believe you could get by with placing the cabling under the case, however, because we now have more than just the ribbon cable exiting the case, our other cables will be pinched down. I'm not a fan of pinched cables, as they can cause issues with data transfer or even damage to your cabling. To combat this issue, I'll be drilling a half-inch hole and placing a rubber grommet in the hole to protect the cabling from the sharp metal sides of the hole. I'll start by using a smaller bit and working my way up to the step-down bit. For those of you unfamiliar with a step bit, it's basically a cone-shaped bit with a stair-step profile that allows you to drill holes of various sizes on one single drill bit. As you drill deeper with the step bit, the larger your hole will become. My step-down bit is about 10 years old. 
it is very dull, and I need to replace it. After making the needed penetration, we'll need to remove any of the metal burrs that are left behind from the drill bit. In truth, I should be using a metal file, but I didn't think ahead to have one on hand, I'm kind of lazy, and I felt that I could knock them off with my screwdriver. Lucky for me, I was right and was able to remove any excess metal with the tools on hand and add my rubber grommet. Before moving on to our next step, I'll be cleaning up a little, as we did get some metal shavings on our work surface. If we don't do so, those metal shavings will scratch the plexiglass on our bezel, and no one wants that to happen. Besides, I've read that a clean workspace is a safe workspace, and I do like to be safe. We're now going to reroute our cabling through our newly made penetration. Believe it or not, fitting everything through the given space safely can be a pain in the bottom, but if you take your time, do not rush, and don't force anything, you'll be fine and able to reroute everything without any issue. It was at this point in time that I came to the realization that I should have put the standoffs on the PCB case before rerouting the cabling. Learn from my mistake, but with that said, I personally just dealt with it and awkwardly added the standoffs. We'll be adding four standoffs for the PCB. I also added two standoffs for the micro switch, but it turns out that M2.5 standoffs are too large, and I should have gotten some M2 standoffs for the micro switch. They aren't really needed, but I think it would have made the mod look sexy to have a place for everything and everything in its place. I may come back later and add those, but I will put a link in the description for the M2 standoffs for any of you that wish to have the right size for the micro switch and do this the right way the first time. With our standoffs in place, let's move on to securing our case to the back of the monitor. When securing our case, we will also want to secure our grounding wire. The grounding cable will be easily identifiable, as it will be the only cable that has an eye hole that you can use to secure the cable. Basically, we'll simply use the eye hole of the grounding cable like a washer, insert our screw through the grounding wire's hole, and adhere it to the needed screw hole of both the case and the monitor. When securing our case to the monitor, be sure not to apply too much pressure, as this will damage the monitor. You will have six screws that need to be reattached, and as I said earlier, I'll be reusing the six original screws that came with the unit. I'd also like to say that the grounding cable could be secured to the PCB, but in truth, I'm not sure that it matters. As both seem like crappy grounding points to me, we'll now want to mount the PCB on our homebrewed mount. For this step, I'll be placing the PCB on the mount, making sure that each standoff is inserted into the corresponding screw hole. I'll also be tying all of this together with 4 M2.5 nuts. Mounting this together is simple enough. You just place the PCB in place, add the nuts as needed, and then tighten them down on the helix of each standoff. Again, if you wish to secure the micro switch, you will need to use the smaller M2 standoffs and not the M2.5 standoffs. I believe I will go back and make that change at a later date. This is also a good time to make sure that all of the screws holding everything in place are nice and secure. Just remember not to apply too much pressure to the back of your monitor to avoid any damage. The last thing we need to do to get our PCB mounted outside of the case is reconnect all of the cables from the monitor to the PCB. From the monitor, we'll have two cables that need to be connected, and you'll wish to be mindful of the cabling orientation when you reconnect. Make sure that the red wires are facing the left side of the PCB board, with your SD card slot facing down. Next, we need to reconnect the Wi-Fi cabling. The Wi-Fi will connect at the top and be on the right side of the two monitor cables. We, of course, can't forget about the ribbon cable at the bottom, and if you've done the no fake mod by misdirection, then be sure to insert your SD card. If you'd like to learn more about the no fake mod, I'll be sure to link to it above and in the description. We'll now need to reinstall our modified PCB board and monitor back into the T2 cab. This is again something that I'm not going to fully cover, as it isn't really different from when you first built your cab. In short, I'm just going to place the monitor back in and secure it in place with the stock screws that come with the unit. After securing the monitor in place, we'll need to move to the deck and place it back on. Again, this isn't something I wish to cover fully, as adding the deck is simple. For those of you who noticed my deck is a little different than stock, that's because I did a cable mod on my cab. It's an easy mod, and if you'd like to learn more about it, then I'll place a link above and in the description. In conclusion, I'm hoping that the PCB mod helps keep my PCB cool and performing well, and I hope keeping the PCB cool helps make the system last much longer. I did play a few of the added games, 
Everything seems to play very well, and I didn't see any slowdowns at all when playing. Again, I've no idea if this mod will help make my system last longer, but it isn't going to hurt anything. Also, if I'm being honest, the exposed PCB looks cool too. I'd like to thank you all for checking out the channel, I truly hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did find it informative, I'd like to ask a favor of you, please like and hit the bell icon for notifications. Please leave me a comment and know that I will do my best to answer each one. Also, please share this video with friends and on your social media, and if you've not done so, please consider subscribing. All of these are just a small click of the mouse to you, but to this small channel, those small clicks mean the world. Thank you.